Now, we're going to turn to a story which has uh, gripped Kenya really and prompted a period of reflection and discussion across the country. We are talking about the murder last month of Agnes Tirop. So if you were watching, for instance, the 5,000 metre Olympic final in August, then you would have seen Agnes Tirop finish in fourth place. And last month in Germany, she broke the female 10K road race world record. 30 minutes, one second to be exact. So she was the world record holder in the female 10K road race. Very much a star on the rise ahead of Paris in 2023. Agnes Tirop, 25 years of age. She was buried on her 26th birthday last month. She was found dead in the western town of E10. And that's a very popular training centre for elite athletes. Stab wounds and blunt trauma have been reported. Her husband was arrested as he attempted to flee the scene. Now, just today, as we record on Tuesday, the 16th of November, he has been charged with her murder. Uh, for more on all of this, we're joined by Joan Chilimo. Uh, Joan herself is a Kenyan long-distance runner, and she's also part of a newly formed group called Tirop's Angels, and that was founded by Kenyan athletes and the Tirop family. Joan, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. So we might start with Agnes for a moment. You would have known Agnes. You would have trained together. Yes, uh, Agnes was uh, was my friend. She was really close to me, and uh, I knew her in 2012. And uh, back in 2018, we trained together. That's where I uh, I did my personal best in half marathon. And later on, I was training for marathon, so we could not train together. But uh, I know I knew her very well. She was my friend and uh, very close to me. What kind of person was Agnes? Um, she was a quiet girl and always she, when you meet her, she was just smiling. And yeah, she she did not talk, um, she was an introvert, I would say. Yes. And clearly, yeah. clearly a very talented athlete as well. Uh, Agnes was very talented because uh, when she was still in uh, primary school, she was... Uh, very strong and she competed to the national and even went abroad and one funny thing is uh she 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 was even running barefoot and winning races as uh, as she was very young athlete and so she was very talented this must have been an incredible shock when you heard the news uh it was really tough for me because first i could not believe it and uh it was uh, very shocking because I was informed by my husband uh, through a phone call and I went to a house and confirmed and I could just see her lying there down helplessly and it was uh, one of the sad moments in my life. It was the saddest uh, day and the news ever I could just get. No, I can imagine. I did see a quote from Viola Cheptu, who I'm sure you know as well, Joan. So she's a fellow competitor. She was second at the New York Marathon recently at the start of uh, this month, November. And she said afterwards she had dedicated her run to Agnes. But she said there were no signs of abuse because she kept it to herself. And just knowing how she was murdered, the pain that she went through has really affected me. Were there any signs that there was something yeah. amiss in the relationship? No, with Agnes, uh, with uh, Viola first, she she is my training partner and coached by my husband. So we uh, we 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 train together mo most of the time, and we could even uh, meet Agnes, but you could not know that she she is being abused or she she has problem because as I told you, you could meet her. She was uh, an introvert, quiet all the time and just smiling, and uh, she could not say anything. You could not read anything from her face, you know. Mm. So um, it was um, it was very sad uh, that she was suffering in silence and she could not talk to anyone about what she was going through. That's why we have um, Syrox Angels now that uh, women can just come out and uh, can speak because many of them are suffering in silence and they have no one to talk to. Yes, yeah, so Tear Up's Angels, Agnes Tear Up is obviously yes. who we're talking about. So Tear Up's Angels, founded by Kenyan athletes and the Tear Up family. Yes, uh, it's uh, founded by um, the family and uh, Kenyan athletes, uh, Mary Kay Tan, she's, uh, she was uh, the London Marathon champion in New York, uh, me and uh, Viola Lagat and Joan, uh, Joan Keror and one of our friends, Caroline Chepkuzge. So 
that is uh, the members, founders of uh, Tirops Angels. What's been very striking, Joan, is that Agnes Tirops' death seems to have prompted a very large and public conversation in Kenya about the abuse of women generally across the country. Is that right? Yes. Uh, uh, it's uh, like um, Tir- uh, Tirops' murder was like, uh, was like a wake-up call to everybody because uh, after what happened to her, many people have just come out and talked to me personally about what they have been going through. So it, it is. It was very sad for 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 Kenya because she was uh, she was a very good athlete. She represented the country, and also to the world because she was just like two months ago breaking the world record. So her mother was really sad for everyone, and also I would say it has. Uh, it was like an alarm because now we we are creating a movement, and we don't want any other Agnes and any other uh, person to go through what she, she went through. We promised ourselves that what happened to her will never happen to any other woman in the world. That's why we have this movement. I was reading a piece in the New York Times and um, it made for terrible reading, really. So it was just giving examples of even in the last month in Kenya, there was uh, Cynthia Makakoka, who was a student at a girls' soccer academy in Nairobi. She was raped and killed and her body was dumped in a river as she went to see her family in western Kenya. There was an Edith Muthani who was trying to make it as an athlete. She was killed in central Kenya and her boyfriend's been reprimanded. And then um, in the southwest of the country, just in the last month, a group of men cut a woman's throat with a machete, accused her of being a witch. And uh, it does seem, according, for instance, to Human Rights Watch, the group in Nairobi, They said violence against women and girls in Kenya is of a pandemic proportions. And they said 45% of women between 15 and 49 report having experienced physical violence in Kenya. So this seems like this has been a significant problem for some time. Yes, uh, gender-based violence is not only about with athletes. It's not only about in Kenya. It's also happening in any part of the world. Mm. And um, it is just that... um, Tirob's mother, because she was well known, and that's why uh, uh, that's why people, BBC and every every other uh, channels who are broadcasting about it. But it happens here. It happens to um, the poor women. It happens to those uh, people who are not known. So gender-based violence in Kenya is very high because, as we speak, uh, many people, many women are have been murdered. And 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 are, and are suffering. So it, it's like almost every day, like 45 percent of women in Kenya go through gender-based violence. So it's not only about uh, it's not only about. Uh, I, I think that Mara is what 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 like a wake-up call, and people sp- uh, started um, like speaking more about it. Mm. That's why we we have this group and we want women not only uh, from um, athletics also, but uh, any other woman suffering can just come out and speak up because they live in fear of their husbands. They live in fear of the society because they cannot speak. The society will judge them and also our cultures because you look that um, uh, when we were growing up, violence was just it's just like normal. People will laugh at you. People, when you are beaten, people will just talk about you. So many are, are cannot come out because they will be seen by the society like they are victims. So that's why they are fearing to speak up. Okay. And that's why this movement is going on. Okay. So that's a very difficult atmosphere to speak up in then. I didn't realize it was quite like that. Uh, yes. Uh, as I told you, um, because of our cultures and because of... Um, uh, and also because of our society that uh, we, people cannot just come out and speak up. But uh, we, we just want to educate the young boys and the young girls, visit schools, so that uh, they don't normalize, because it's kind of violence is normalized in our communities, you know. And we have to have to teach women their rights, and human rights, you know, that their place is not only in the kitchen and to have babies. The world has changed. We travel a lot. The world is changing. So they should know their rights. They should leave uh, toxic marriages, uh, those kind of stuff.
Yes. And if uh, yes. and by the way, I think you make a very fair point when you say that gender based violence is a worldwide problem. So I don't want to be unfair to Kenya here, but we're talking about Agnes Tirup and talking about Kenya. So we'll proceed on that basis that it is a worldwide problem for a woman in a toxic relationship, as you say, Joan, who might want to leave. What options are available? Um, for now, women who want to leave the, the toxic relationship is a, is very hard because uh, I live in Iten and there are no safe homes. There are no hotline numbers. So that's why they just uh, stick to the relationship. And also because of... Uh, the, the, so that's why we have this um, uh, foundation, Tirops Angels, we we focus really focus on uh, building uh, safe places and safe homes where when they have uh, problems in their marriages they can run to and also we have uh, counselors where they can they can also talk to people who can just guide them on uh, on how on their mental health and how they will be okay with uh, without being in a in marriage you know but for now i am telling you there is no place they can go there is no safe homes where they can they can go and that is one of our objectives okay because I did see in June of this year, before Agnes's death, the Kenyan government had launched a plan to end violence against women in five years. They have a 12-point plan. So I wonder to what extent they are trying, do you think? Um, uh, right now, like in, uh, I think from next week, they, we, we really thank the government because it's, it has uh, really uh, waking up on, on this uh, gender-based violence issue. And... Uh, it's not bad, but it's a bit slow mm. uh, what the government is doing. But we really hope that uh, they will fasten it as possible because there are more, more victims are coming out and uh, more murders are just women are being murdered. And we hope it will be quicker than we expect. But uh, we do not want to wait. We say how long should we, women be killed? So, So we are going to... To, to do us, our, our, our projects, as even we wait for the government, it will also be good for us and for women at large. And over the past couple of weeks, Joan, is this being talked about in the media in a big way in Kenya, on the television programmes, on the radio? Is this Has this become a huge discussion point? Um, it has not been very huge, to be honest, right. but internationally, yes, uh, because I told you, it's like... Uh, gender-based violence is just normalized because we grew up seeing our neighbors fighting and people making jokes about it. So it's just something they just talked about uh, one or two days and that was it. It just happened for Tirop issue. When she was murdered, it's, uh, she, she was talked to like in, in, for, for two weeks because she was Agnes Tirop. She was known to the world. But there are other women who nobody knows them and they are not being talked about. Mm. Yeah, uh, which is very dreadful and upsetting, I'm sure. And I know you were talking to my colleague Arthur in advance of our conversation. And there's no pressure, by the way, if you, you don't want to talk about yourself. But he mentioned that you had said you had been in a toxic relationship yourself, so you understand what so many women are going through in Kenya. Yes, uh, me personally, I I have healed now, so I'm not hurt anymore, and um, I think. I can talk about my life, and that's why I'm really standing up for other women. I was in a very bad relationship. I was in a toxic relationship. All my athletics earnings were taken away, and um, uh, the guy is well known. And I was one month pregnant, and I was kicked out, and I could not do anything. I went to struggle by myself. I st stayed with my parents struggled by myself until um, my daughter, she's six years now, she she studies in Paris, she w was born and but I am lucky, I, I walked out so many of them, they suffer they don't talk their problems to anyone and they end up being murdered so for me it's very sad because it happened uh, six years ago but now, people know me as Joan Chirimo, but my story is a different one. There are many more stories. After I did an interview about my story, I'm telling you, I have six women now. They came out and they are suffering. 
and they are being abused just because of my story. I hope that uh, with my story, someone will get out and not wait to be murdered. So I have, I am okay now, and um, my life is okay, and I'm standing up on behalf of them. Mm. Yes. I guess you were lucky in some ways that you had your parents to go to. If somebody doesn't have that support network, it's much di- more, much more difficult. Yes, because um, the good thing with our culture is that you, when you go back to your parents, they can still support you. But the worst thing also is that people value marriage like it's a life, life sentence or life, I don't know, it's yes. a, a certificate of life. Yes. So, and the judgment when you're not married. Me, I was single for like three years and they, they were, people judge you, the society judge you. They see you like um, a different character when you're not married. That's why these women still stick to, to, to their marriages because they don't want to be single. You know, so that is also another another problem. Mm. But uh, at least now they see me running in London and they know that, oh, she walked out. They know my story. Yeah. And that's why they're coming out and having uh, conversations. And it's really good. I feel proud for me because when people call me and tell me their problems, it's um, I feel I feel proud because I inspired someone with uh, me walking out of my relationship. If mm. Agnes would walk out, it could be a different story today. Uh, you mentioned something there about your uh, f- uh, your earnings from your career being, being taken away. I wonder generally, not talking about your situation necessarily, but there must be lots of very young, talented athletes coming through who have the potential to earn lots of money. And I wonder, is that potentially an area where, uh, well, men or women indeed are, are taking advantage of younger athletes coming through? Is, is that a phenomenon in Kenya? Yes, it is very much because, uh, you know, uh, these, uh, I call them predators. I don't even call them husbands or, or spouses because they go to the junior competitions where these athletes are from school. And when someone sees uh, there's a junior athlete running and they run good, they like take them and manipulate them with small amount of money. And uh, because they are young, because they lack of education, they just get married and then... Um, maybe because the, the the guy or the the partner gave him something like uh, support in training, they just uh, take all their earnings. That is, most of them are being manipulated. Most of them are being taken away. Most of them, they don't even have properties on their names as much as they are known to the world. We know many of them. Uh, I hope they will come out. They they are big names, and they cannot have even their own cars, written logbooks, so or they cannot even have the, any property, whether it's a house or a land, on their names. So most of them are really suffering because they cut off education. They don't uh, they they don't continue their education, and and they get these teenage or uh, early preg- early marriages. Mm. So that is um, the factors that are really affecting and. We are going to tackle on that because we will visit schools and we will try to talk to emphasis on education and to stop um, uh, being married when they are young. Okay. Well, that's a whole other area as well, isn't it? Wow, that's um, that's terrible to hear. And are the Kenyan Federation able to do anything to protect these vulnerable young athletes? Uh, right now, they started uh, talking to athletes and they are going to camps and uh, where mostly athletes are based. And um, they will be in it on 24th and 25th of this month. And it's really a good initiative from them. So it has just started. Okay. So you see, again, um, it, it, it was not there before, but uh, Tirob's mother really raised a lot of alarm to the okay. country and to everybody else. Okay. So this is the work that Tirob's angels will hopefully embark on and continue. It, Yes, uh, would yeah, Tirop's angels would really, would really just. Um, we, I was telling you, we'll just yes uh, promote dialogue on, on equality, and also we'll just have the homes, you know, like a, a community for the victims. Yeah, okay. and also the, I told you about the educational sessions, you know, for for young men and women, and to teach even at least for respect and men to res- boys. To, to respect women and relationship and that they can walk away. Yeah. Okay. And teach women their rights. 
but mainly is to eradicate gender-based violence and also for the memory of Agnes. So we want her memory to live with us. Well, Joan, thanks so much for coming on and telling us about all that again. Condolences to you and all concerned over Agnes. It's obviously a dreadful situation and hopefully some good can come from it. It seems like you're you're doing great work there. So, Joan Chalimo, thanks so much for joining us on the line from Kenya. Thanks, Joan. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was Joan Chalimo there talking to us uh, from Kenya about what's been happening in the weeks uh, since Agnes Tirop's murder. If you haven't seen that story, it made uh, international headlines. And uh, naturally, I'm conscious you may have been affected by uh, some of the topics covered in that conversation. So there is help out there. Safeireland.ie is a good place to start. It's got contact details, numbers and websites for lots of support groups out there if you were affected by any of the uh, conversation.